However, Alfred Okanse is still with me where we are going to look at that particular constituency. Now, who are the key in the, uh, players in the elections going into 2024, December 7? Let's find out. We know one of them, Cynthia Mamle Morrison, MPP, MP as we speak, yeah. but is going independent. Who is now the NPP candidate in the constituency? Alfred is with us to walk us through it. Alfred, thank you for joining us. As always. Yeah, so, so let's, so. let's start with the parliamentary results. Aguna West in focus now. And, and while we're at it, it's just also worth it putting in on record and also in, in, in perspective that this constituency has a number of areas where the MPP primarily and traditionally has a hold. If you look at from the period 1996 to date, the NPP's dominance and hold in this constituency is not in doubt. Areas such as Agunanyakrum, Agunankum, Agunakunyakum, and all of these places within the constituency is one that the NPP can go to bed and still win. But there are two specific areas that the NDC also wins in the area. That's Agunankum. That's one area that the, ND, the, N, the NDC, as a matter of fact, has won over time. Mm. But if you look at it generally, right from 1996, the NDC has only won twice. And this is in 1996 and in the year 2012. And there's a story behind that. Because in 1996, what we are seeing playing out now today is what actually happened. In 1996, there was a little scuffle between some two persons within the constituency who, who, who went to primaries on the ticket of the MPP. The person who won now had a little issue with the, the second one who came in. There was actually a different vote of 12 mm. between them in 1996, which led to the other also breaking away. He didn't contest as an independent, but then again decided not to also back the support of the person who won. Mm. That's what led to the NDC win in 1996. Guess what? In 2012, you know what happened in the run-up to that election? John Advance Tamils died, and he is an indigenous of the central region. Was as it was a few years. So the NDC went in strongly with that campaign. Right. And in 2012, we saw the NDC, in fact, winning a number of the seats in the central region. Aguna West was one of them right. because of that sympathy votes that they went into that year 2012 that election when Jonas Evans Mills died with and that gave them a stronghold in that constituency and you would see that because the NPP has a hold in that constituency in the year 2016 they came back got, got that constituency back during that period when the MPP, in fact, also won and also re-established their hold of the central region, taking up as much as nine seats from the, the NDC within that period when Nanado Dankwe Kufado won that election with, with a historic victory margin that we've seen, at least in our fourth republic as a yeah. country. So the, ND, the NPP has held in the year 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, in fact, 2016 and in, in, in 2020 for the year 1996, they won it. And the yeah. NDC won just one in the yeah. year 1996. Let's fast forward. Um, so, to, so just to, to put it happened. in perspective again, this is a presidential result. Absolutely. And for the presidential result, it seems that the N NPP is very comfortable winning the, um, the Agona West constituency. Now, I remind you, it is not a swing constituency in a swing region. Mm -hmm. Central region actually swings either way uh, as and when they feel uh, like voting for a particular candidate. But when it comes to presidential results, the NPP has always had a very comfortable win for the Aguna West constituency primarily. And it's only in 96 under Jerry John Rawlings that the NDC won. And that's the only time they won presidentially. But parliamentary, like you indicated, NDC has won twice and uh, was on the back of the demise in That's 2012 right. of yeah. uh, the former president. But when it comes to presidential, it's a... Uh, but it's uh, instructive that you also make the point about what happened in the year 2012. The reason being that even though the NDC won that parliamentary, the presidential, the MPP still won. Exactly. That tells you a story that even though the party went in with that campaign of sympathy in the year 2012, John Dramani Muhammad did not win. They're going to wear constituency for presidential. Mm. They still stuck to their hold and their love for the MPP. Mm. So you can safely say that in the year 2012, it was a skirt and blouse situation. Certainly. Where in the Agona West, they voted for their parliamentary candidate, but stuck with the MPP for their presidential candidate. Mm. And that's what we, we, we saw playing out. Fast forward into the year 2020, this woman has held this constituency for 
two terms. She's decided that she's going to in, in, as an in, independent candidate this time around. You cannot discount her hold and also her impact and influence in this constituency. Mm. And check the numbers. In the year 2020, she won over 51% of the valid vote cast as against the NDC's candidate, Paulo Foriamua. And bear in mind, the NDC has also changed their candidate going into this election. So then you would ask the question as to whether their fortunes are going to change going into this particular election in 2024. Mm. But Cynthia Morrison, you, you cannot take her hold and, and strength and impact from that constituency right. when you're doing this analysis. If you do the vote difference between the MPP and the NDC, at least for the year 2020, the outcome of that election, over 2,840 of the valid vote cast is what you see there. Yeah. Well, the NDC is going in here with someone else other than this one that we saw in the year 2020. Mm. Ernestina Ofori Dangwe, we understand, is from the western side of Aguna West, where it's not a typical Akan area. Right. Right. But if you look at the dynamics and demography of that constituency, you have a lot more of the MPP votes coming from Aguna Nyakrom, Aguna Kwenyakon, Aguna Suedro, and um, Benkum, and all those areas. As to whether she, this Christoph Atta, can draw votes from that area as against this lady who is coming in from an area that already votes for the NDC. As a matter of fact, if you look at 1996 all the way to, to this moment, where she is coming from, that is the Inkum area, Aguna Inkum, they vote primarily for the NDC. You see um, have them having a hold in there. As to whether she can now expand the tentacles of the NDC mm. to draw in votes from the typical Akan areas mm. where Christopher Atta is from, it's also another question that left to be answered. Okay. But then again, the MPP has a double whammy because then they are not only faced with the strength of Ernestine Ofori, but also Cynthia Morrison, who is going independent. And mm. bear in mind the numbers that she pulled. It cannot only be because she contested on the ticket of the MPP, but also she has garnered enough influence for herself as an individual, yeah. having occupied that ministerial position as a uh, women, women and children, and then also the kind of developmental project that she has had in that constituency. That's the reason why last week, if you realize, there was this false news of she then rescinding the decision to go independent, mm. going back to the party. The party knows the impact that she has in that constituency. Right. And in fact, if you speak to the, her handlers, they are quite concerned about how that false news may have also impacted on those who were already willing and had decided to vote for her because then they started receiving calls as to whether she was really, you know, going back to the not. NPP okay. or, or not. So they've got some work to do to diffuse that and also reestablish the fact that Cynthia Morrison is going as an independent candidate. With everything that's happened between yesterday and today, We'll see how things play out in the coming days. All right. Thank you very much. Alfredo Kanse with the Ghana West constituency in perspective for us. Stay with us. We have many more analysis for you right after this break.